Hi there and welcome to Your Modern Shame and Maria Maria in Rainbow Land. This is the weekly heartful report uh, from the week that starts at the 21st until the 29th of August 2018. Here with a new setup we will have a new sort of report and it's going to be called Seven Signs of the Week because each week we will have seven things I will go through that are significative for this week or the week we are going through. This week will be filmed from the home in Denmark, close to the forest, and uh, you will see some nature wonders instead of my face this time. And it will take you into yourself and your core and create peace while you listen. So, this week, we will have, first of all, the general overview, the main point of the week for the report. Number one. Number two, sun. The sun is moving into an earth sign, into Virgo. What does this mean for your sign? Number three, Mercury. It is going direct. Ooh, yeah, from last week. It is sextiling Venus. Mm. And it's growing Jupiter, a benefic planet. So, number four, Mars is direct later on this week in Capricorn. Ooh, still blows from Uranus, but in a new light. Four planets still retro. Number five. Venus is still at home. Mm, we like her, but it's gonna square Pluto. What does this mean for the relationships? Number six. Full moon in Pisces. On the 26th of August. Number seven, card of the week. Yay, we'll start with weekly tarot cards because Maria has been doing tarot since she got her first deck at, uh, from her father who is also a tarot card reader when she was 12. So of course she will use this now and it's right away, right away card. Yeah, that is the extra of this week, but it will be every week from now on that we will also take a tarot card. For each sign. So these are the seven th- signs of the week. And now we start with number one. Are you ready? The overall view for all of us. Yay! And this week, my main theme will be Man plans, God, God laughs. And do you know what I mean by that? Well, man plans and God laughs. That means something that I have discovered so many times. We can want and desire this and that and that and this with our little human egos. And we sh- for sure we will because we have Jupiter and Scorpio. And we can shout and we can scream and we can do this and that and we can complain and be, put guilt upon this and that person. You know, and say, oh, this is also because he didn't do, or she didn't do, or I didn't do, and we blame ourselves, we blame others, etc. But when it all comes down to it, I've said it before, then what I can see as an astrologer is that there is a plan. There is a plan. So you can scream and you can shout. But your higher self made a plan with God before you came here. And you can call it God or whatever. I don't care. I am not talking about just, you know, any kind of 3D God that wants your money. I'm talking about creator, what made us, what we are all a grand part of, which means that God is us in a way. But um, that's a longer philosophical story. The whole point is... That whatever you're struggling with now, and whatever you feel bruised and battered about coming out of the eclipse, is a part of a plan. 
you know, if you have a strong desire with Jupiter and Scorpio, you have with Uranus and Taurus, there's something you want to manifest. You know, and with all the things that has been going on in Leo, where we are now going into another sign, of course, then, yeah, you know what I'm going to say? We have a lot of things we want to do and have fun and do things that makes us laugh and joyful and da 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 da. And that's what we've been going through during these eclipses because the last two ones were in Leo, where we want to play and have a joyful life, etc. But not all of the plants are accessible right now. So surrender your desires to God. The spiritual journey of anyone on this planet is all about if you want to ascend and want to fulfill the, pers- the spiritual purpose of being on this planet and ascend to Nirvana or whatever you want to call it, you know, to the next level where you don't have to reincarnate, the whole trick is to actually be able to let go of all your desires. To let go of all your desires, to give them to God, to Creator, to trust, to your higher self and trust the process and notice the signs along the way. Follow the path of the highest vibration of joy or the highest vibration of what makes your heart sing. And now I'm not saying that, oh, but it makes me so joyful to go to the cinema and watch these kind of movies and da da da. This is not what I'm talking about. Those are the, the pleasures we can have here on a 3D plane. I'm talking about when we don't have resistance in a certain way and you need to know, learn to know yourself on a deep core level as a soul to know when it's actually your heart that sings to you. But sometimes we suffer and we feel suffering. This can be old karmic debt being paid back, so to speak. And this can create a lot of suffering, of course, because we live, relive st- stuff to let it go, to release it. But if a door isn't open and you tr- keep trying to force it open, it's not the right door if it doesn't open. I'm not saying, like, for, for example, if you have a business and you want to fight for it and it takes time and keeps you hitting shut doors, but if there's no signs of you going, uh, continuing in this direction because it doesn't give you joy. That's what I'm talking about. Or if you're with someone who doesn't want a child and you really want it. Maybe because this person is having a, an illness in the family that no, he knows or she knows that will go on to the child. And, or maybe this person already had five children. And, but then, you know, hand your desire over to God if, you, if it doesn't feel right to leave the woman, or to leave the man. You know, and whatever thing it is that you desire so badly, if you can leave any kind of desire to God, then you have liberated yourself. Because then you can actually start living your highest purpose and fulfill what you came here for. And listen and hear, because then you're you're open. When you let go of the desires you have to achieve certain things, you are open. Otherwise you're closed off. So this is very important on this journey of finding out where we're going. Maybe you, probably you, are the only one standing in your way for yourself. Maybe your purpose is to serve other people as a light worker. And then the benefits will come as you do so. Give all your cares and worries and desires and things to God, is what they always taught us. And then the world will land before your feet. Because then you are empty enough to see the beauty in the things that you already have. And you will attract attract more of the beautiful things. And you will see that the things that you didn't think was beautiful, or you didn't recognize or realize that you actually had in your life, was actually already the gifts that you wanted. But you kept complaining because 
That is just the nature of us as human beings sometimes. Do you know, my dad used to call it the, ru- the law of unsatisfaction. You know, that is what we are so good at. Limiting ourselves as human beings for that matter. Okay, so... No matter how spiritual you think you are, we are all in a process. No matter how far you think you've come, we are all in a process. I don't think that anyone got out of this eclipse without feeling bruised and sun one way or the other. I hope that you see why and that you are in a good new direction for yourself in your life. After the eclipse, we all woke up to some realities. And then realities we need to learn to accept everything is possible in the right order but not everything is possible in the same life we really need to feel into what is actually the purpose and point for us in this life we cannot get all lives gathered into one freedom and space and ten children at the same time being a known musician and being a very per- personal and private person. It's a retrograde phase. It's time to stand face to face to our, with ourselves. So don't focus too much upon, oh, but he also said, and she also did, and they also, da, 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 da. Put your focus and intention inwardly, still. I know that some has to be outwardly, because now we have Mercury moving forward, and we will have... Mars doing the same thing. So, a lot is going on this week. So, number two for you guys this week, Aries. The sun in Virgo. Makes a grand trine in Earth signs, you know. And... This is between Uranus, of course, in Taurus, as we've mentioned many times before, and Saturn up there in Capricorn, and now also the Sun, moving over Regulus, as I mentioned last week. So what does this mean for the Aries? Well, this may you help you a lot manifest some of the things that you really want to manifest and that you have wanted to for a long time. Of course... In the beginning of the week, we will still have mass retrograding, which means, and I'm sorry if there's a little bit of wind here, which means for you guys that you can feel that you can move forward and start manifesting things by doing your regular routines properly, looking over things twice or three times if you're not sure because we have Saturn there helping you, being realistic about what actually can be done, doing things step by step and get brilliant ideas of how you can get some better things going for you, like innovative ideas about your finances. And uh, in Virgo, it's about service, so maybe you need to help someone along the way. And uh, we also have, the, as I said, the, the realist Saturn. It can be a little cold, so the trick here is just to accept that this is the reality, but also be super happy about that now we can get something done, something manifested. So the Sun in Virgo, we love. That is number two. Number three. Mercury square Jupiter this week. Okay, so Mercury in sign of Leo, our fifth house, in square to Jupiter up there, in Scorpio, where we have our deep, strong desires. So Mercury is moving forward. It might be that there's some kind of topic that you've been talking about many times before that's itching inside of you. You want to say something about it, perhaps, and you also seem to understand and see it in a new light. Maybe you want kids and you can't have it because uh, your partner, some deep crisis uh, of yours uh, from a past life or something like that because it's Scorpio, so it's something very deep. Or maybe you want uh, to manifest uh, more time, spend more time with your children, but you can't because your money doesn't allow you or the partner, the other partner doesn't think the same as you do. Uh, or maybe you just want a creative uh, work, uh, you know, a creative product to 
be manifested and you think about it in a new light but you feel like uh, someone is blocking you uh, investor wise the investors don't want the same thing as you but don't worry the sun always rises tomorrow so mercury square uranus can also give you some optimism about this thing so it doesn't have to just be negative because you uh, no, what I mean, Mercury is great, Jupiter, of course. Jupiter is the pos positive optimist, so even though there's something that doesn't go exactly your way, you will have an enthusiasm about how you can turn it and make money on your talents, as long as you are realistic. Number four, Mars enters retrograde. In Capricorn, yes! We love that. On the 28th, Mars moves forward again. And we know it's exalted in Capricorn, so even though it's at the critical degrees where things can feel a little bit <laughs> under pressure, not to say the least, I mean, uh, then you again feel your goals, your ambitions, and how, you, you know, the whole drive, and, and Mars is putting, blowing some fire into the Grand Trine, I was mentioning in part two, with, with about the sun making the Grand Trine in Earth science. This can make you feel that you have the wind in your sails or in your back on, as you, you're biking down the road so you get a, a tempo on things again little by little so all the challenges you have been facing recently will now perhaps and hopefully possibly turn into some opportunities for you to move forward number five mercury and venus see we love that because Venus is at home and Mercury is in Leo. So between the 5th and the 7th house, this is a really, really nice sextile. And this may mean that you have some mm, very nice conversations uh, with your romantic partner. Uh, and uh, it can also just be partnerships in general where you, you know, feel some enthusiasm or you can... You could bring some enthusiasm to other people through, you know, how you shine when you're in contact with others and how you can just, you know, your tongue will talk beautifully uh, in a diplomatic way. Uh, you can charm your way into meeting the right people business-wise or having the, a really good time with your partner. And yeah, you probably deserve it so much. But at the same time, Venus is growing Pluto and it's all about... Uh, relationships and as I said uh, in the uh, section number one you have to remember that we've had a lot of inward time thinking feeling into our own situations so has other people so don't blame them if they aren't quick enough to come out of the closet and and join the party ish <laughs> you know um, this is a time where we need to learn to be responsible in our relationships where we need to learn not to project our own emotions and make others responsible for them, but to see behind the veil, behind the surface. So Venus square Pluto in your 10th can also be, you know, sexual offers <laughs> or temptations if you don't have a partner. Um, but you, I would advise a money ca caution or maybe there's some kind of professional offer with some catch because Pluto is hidden things, you know. Uh, maybe your true mo motivations of others uh, need to be, you know, scrutinized. Or your, other, uh, your own motivations, of course, is also always important to look upon. That when we think that others have something stirring, could it be you that are manipulative in some way? Ah, another. So, basically, these eclipses has done some things to us probably and most likely and uh, they have been tearing us down and put us into some realities that seemed you know bruised and battered or sh shattered where, where things you know have broken for us or broken things inside of us things that needed to be broken and uh, it's kind of like our inner volcano has been erupting uh, because it couldn't it was not capable of holding any more unbalanced things polluted things inside of us anymore so kind of like we we went into the shadows of ourselves our, of our depths into the 
the parts where we, you know, with the lunar eclipse, uh, the the one, the blood moon lunar eclipse on the 25th of July, and and now we are kind of reborn and renewed, and we got that in the fifth house, the the, the sign of Leo, where we follow our hearts and where we have a new reality, and yeah, this is a good thing for you, no matter how fearful you are about the thing you lost or the things that doesn't exist in you no more don't worry move forward as our planet finally moves forward we love that i tell you it's only happening twice a year you know i mean once every two years and every time it's happening i think and feel whoa this is crazy and now it was happening with the eclipses and stuff at the same time don't worry we all felt like this was crazy and now we're moving out of it little by little Thank God. Thanks for watching. Big Cox Bye. See you next week. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you don't already do that. And remember that it's always, I always send you a big welcome to give any sort of critics, compliments, what is good, what is bad, what works, what doesn't work. I truly appreciate that. Constructive criticism is always good. I have been trying to do this now for 15 weeks and um, I have listened to many, many positive things and a few uh, thing, people who didn't like this or that, but mainly only positive. But all is welcome as long as it's constructive and it comes from the center of your heart. Thanks for watching. Big hugs. Your modern chairman, Maria Maria, in Rainbowland, checking out. Ciao. Ooh, almost forgot. Don't follow trends, follow your heart. Ooh, Ari, so your card of the week is da -da -da, Ace of Wands. Yay! The favorite Aries card. <laughs> it is the Aries card, so how amazing it seems like as we move into Tuesday. So at the very end of our, the, this report's week, uh, we have Mars going forward and that will, yeah, this will, will get us back into our element again. It's The wands are fire element and the ace of wands is a new beginning for us. It's time for us to go forward, move forward, full throttle with a new start, you know, because we during all the retrogrades, you know, we always need to put so much extra in energy into anything, you know, so things start become more, becoming more predictable again, and we can also have a say in what is going on. It does, hasn't feel, felt like that for a long time. So all the complications in re our romantic lives, you know, any delays, surprises, miscommunications in, in regards to your romantic life, partners, creative projects, children, anything that your heart wants you to follow where you have had to work extra hard for it, you will see some results and less feeling of stalling will be here. Yay! Woo! Let's do this! Aries, fellow Aries, I'll take you by the hand and we'll run into the sunlight full of fire in our ass. <laughs> see you next week. Oh, don't follow trends, follow your heart. Summer, summer, summer time. Summer time. Summer time. Summer time.